So I don't usually cover actual scientific dinosaur news on this channel. I usually keep my focus on dinosaurs in entertainment, or dinosaur-related creatures in entertainment. But I did release a particular video early this year that stirred up a bit of controversy. Not a whole lot, but certainly some discussion and back and forth. And I feel like what I have found here is relevant to that in a way. So here's what happened in case you missed it. A few months back, I made a video asking the question of whether or not dinosaurs should be portrayed with scientific accuracy in fiction. Because that's kind of a debate that seems to go around quite a bit. Dinosaurs are usually just portrayed as monsters in your average work of fiction. It's rare for them to be portrayed with scientific accuracy based on what we know at the time, of course. Unless you're making a documentary. For the most part, though, they are just stand-ins for dragons. They are dragons that just happen to actually exist, unlike actual dragons. But, of course, the question then becomes, as we learn more about dinosaurs and make new discoveries, should art reflect that? And I took the side of those who say, no, not really. I mean, that is to say, if you're going to do scientifically accurate dinosaurs, then do your homework. But in the end, I felt that scientific accuracy, when it comes to dinosaurs in fiction, is more of a personal creative choice than an obligation. And part of why I said that was because what we know about dinosaurs is in a constant state of flux. It's always changing. There are always new discoveries being made, and there are discoveries being called into question. And basically, what we know about dinosaurs is very far removed from what we conclude about dinosaurs. So with that in mind, you may as well not make it that big of a priority as far as I'm concerned. If you're making a factual thing, then stick to what we know and make sure it lines up. But if you're telling a work of fiction, it really should come down to what works for the story. If a scientifically accurate dinosaur works for the story, go with one. But if it requires something a bit more monstrous, then go with something more monstrous. What does it matter? Who cares? Some people cared, of course, and I'll get to that in a moment. But I found an article posted in a Facebook group I'm part of that I feel relates back to it, as I've said. Now, the article in question was posted in 2017, so it's a bit older, but I did a bit more research, and more recent articles from 2018, the year this video is being made, do line up with it. So, what's the basic gist of what I'm talking about? Well, if you can see the title, it's hearkening back to the question of whether or not T. rex, Tyrannosaurus rex, had feathers. And according to this article, there's a pretty good case to be made that perhaps it doesn't. Now, it's a very long and technical article, and it would take way too long for me to go down through it here, and there's a chance I might accidentally mess something up. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link to it down in the description so you can read it for yourselves when you have the time. I highly recommend it. It's a very well written, very well thought out article. But the whole idea here is that it's saying T-Rex probably was scaly more likely than it was feathery. And like I said, there's a lot that goes into it. Just to give you an idea, there is one thing I can... Uh, pretty well comment on without making myself look like a total fool. So here's the one little bit that I'll share with you from the article, and then go and read the rest for yourselves. So, one thing often said in favor of T-Rex having feathers is that, uh, you know, T-Rex relatives had feathers, and even though we have found samples of fossilized T-Rex skin that are scaly rather than feathery, they're small patches of skin, and they're from regions of the body that would be featherless anyway. Now, as this article points out, 
that's kind of misleading. Because, first of all, even though those patches of fossilized skin are small when compared to the actual size of a T-Rex, they're actually pretty big pieces of skin in their own right. Uh, like I said, I mean, you take this... If Say you were to take a fossil sample of me and you took the skin from the back of my hand. That is a small patch of skin in proportion to the rest of my body, but it's a pretty large patch of skin on its own, right? So, the patches of skin being referenced for the T-Rex aren't as small as you might be led to believe. And as far as what regions of the body they come from, well, included is this little diagram that was mapped out. And we see here that, in actuality, those patches of skin can be traced to practically every part of the T-Rex. The head, the torso in various places, the legs, the tail. They come from every single region, and they're all featherless. So, it stands to reason that those patches of skin would be consistent throughout the body, right? So, since they show no signs of having been denuded or somehow stripped of feathers, you know, not too much of a leap in logic to assume that he must have been scaly all throughout. Now, lest you think I'm taking the hard line scientifically here, I do want to make clear the article itself doesn't really prove that T-Rex didn't have feathers. It is making a case based on the provided evidence, which is the exact same method that led to people saying T-Rex had feathers in the first place. So, why am I bringing it up? Because like I said, it ties back to that point I was making about portraying dinosaurs in fiction. What I said way back then was the science fact of today can easily become the science fiction of tomorrow when it comes to dinosaurs, because discoveries are always being made and challenged and whatnot. So, in that sense, it seems that when you're writing a work of fiction, you shouldn't feel that obligated to commit to the facts, because the facts could very well change. You could take the hard line and say, I am portraying dinosaurs as they really were, and then in five years' time, your book is outdated and adhering to silly concepts no one believes anymore. Case in point, we now have a challenge to the claim that T-Rex was a feathery creature. Like I said, this article is from 2017, but I have looked up other articles from 2018 which seem to also say that it was debatable, unlikely, maybe. No one's really taking an exact hard line, but it is kind of in that realm of maybe we were jumping the gun by saying T-Rex had feathers. So the people who were saying that T-Rex definitely does have feathers and that's how they should be portrayed in the movies from this point forward, well... You know, that just doesn't seem as definite of a fact as it used to now. I just think it's curious is all. I got a lot of people on that video saying that they thought I wasn't giving the scientific branch of paleontology enough credit because there were certain things we definitely knew, like T-Rex having feathers, and that should be incorporated into film and other forms of entertainment for the sake of disseminating the right information. Now that right information is called into question. And the very fact that it has been called into question means it's not a definite fact anymore. Not until something comes along that definitely tips the scales one way or the other. So, I feel that with that in mind, my original point stands. Scientific accuracy when it comes to portraying dinosaurs in fiction is a creative choice, not an obligation. And really, if you choose to go with a more outdated, monstrous dinosaur, well, 
quite ironically, it will wind up being timeless. The facts about dinosaurs as they were in actual history may have changed, and will continue to change, no doubt, but movie dinosaurs are forever. It's possible this video may be seen as me attempting to stir the pot. I assure you that's not the case. I want no part in the modern-day Bone Wars. All I wanted to say was that this does harken back to my point about how dinosaurs are portrayed in fiction. So I hope it cleared things up, and if it didn't, well, I'm not entirely sure what else I could say. But either way, I do recommend that you read the article and any other articles you might be able to find on the topic. It's quite an interesting read, believe me. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omniviewer, signing off. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it, as well as subscribe to the channel for more content of a similar nature. Also, check the description for links to our Twitter, DeviantArt, and Patreon pages, as well as the Amazon link for the novel Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, penned by yours truly. Thank you all, and we appreciate your support.